The Get On Living Saintly campaign is sponsoring this podcast to remind you to keep your spending in the community. Supporting local businesses keeps food on the table for our friends and neighbors. Follow them on social media and learn more at getonlivingsafely.com. You lit light lantern, stay busy, play midi. Don't be let it down. Track all your patterns. I shot for the moon. Made it well past Saturn. I ain't your yes man. Don't mistake me for your best friend. I have a collector, not a collection. Hardly a question. It must be infections of why they moving. And everybody's standing still. You're listening to the alternative hip-hop band, The Lavender Project, born from impromptu jam sessions with area band Knee High July. We talk origins, process when writing, favorite songs, the pandemic, and what's coming up for this unique collaboration of sound coming out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. You can find more conversations on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. I'm Fernando Mendoza. And I'm um, one of the vocalist rappers, you could say, on the uh, Lavender Project. <laughs> I'm Kyle. I play keys and I sing as well. I'm Anthony. I do bass primarily. I'm Jet Hertz and I rap on the Lavender Project. I'm Stephanie and I also just sing. Not just sing. Well, not just <laughs> sing, but I you sing. sing. <laughs> you sing. You and, sing. We, and we also have Carter playing the drums, and yeah. we, and then we have Josh playing the lead on guitar. Yeah, Josh yeah. is out of town, out west. Yeah. Yeah. I envy him. So we can talk bad about him right now? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, do we do that. He's so awfully good. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, we got to see you perform at the Weber Center, which will be coming out here shortly for people to stream. How did the band come together? It was such a fun experience to watch you guys work collaboratively as as you went through the set. How did the band come together? The first garage session we did with Nehi July was sort of like the first iteration of it in its own way. Like we, you know, we did that set and then we just, we were having such a good time. Kyle was there running sound for us. And, <laughs> Poorly, and, poor, you know, <laughs> yeah, right? but we like the the set ended. We just kept having such a good time. We just kept playing, and uh, Mike Makes and Dylan Overhouse decided to fire up the stream again, and that's when Chris jumped on the mic yeah. and just just let him have it, which is cool. And then from there, I don't know. We all just kind of realized, like, uh, we started bringing more people into the fold, and realized the chemistry was really there and the creativity was there, and so we just kind of rolled with it. And like the first, I don't know like month of all of us playing together the first few sessions we wrote like four or five songs we that were awesome. about a half of that right. set we yeah, played. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. crazy so no, honestly the creativity hasn't stopped so it's it's been it's been cool to, to play with everybody but having such a large band multi-instruments and the rapping going on what is the process when you write music is it just kind of jumping in and just kind of mixing it up or do you guys take a come with some lyrics or what's it like we haven't really nailed it down exactly. Uh, we're still pretty young as a band, so uh, we're still developing it. But in a lot of ways, we uh, we come with our own stuff. Uh, we all do music yeah. outside of the Lavender Project, even beforehand. And so uh, it's a mixture of like kind of doing stuff together, but bringing stuff from outside, from maybe some past influence or past ideas we had. I'd say um, me and Fernando, we come in and there's already like some keys laid down. And mm-hmm. then we're like, okay, we can pick from this and pick for that because we write so often for our own mm-hmm. stuff. And then we can just separate from this and that and be like, okay, this is Lavender Project. This is our solo stuff. This is our collab stuff. We can all separate it from it. So it's pretty nice like that because we all like that chemistry. We can all just fit into it real quick. It doesn't take that much time. I feel like too, it's kind of fun watching like, like we all have, like like Chris and Fernando have been working with each other for a long time already, so they have that chemistry down. If you're watching like chemistry develop between them and the rest of the band, like I watch a lot of like times Kyle and Steph will kind of like nail in on a vocal kind of rhythm or harmony or something, or Josh and Kyle. We all we all kind of like kind of grow off each other a little bit. We all kind of riff off each other and have <clears throat> ideas that that influence each other. And a lot of times you have an idea you come in with, but it's kind of cool to. Get that mm-hmm. outside input. Like and that, that, you know? That's like one of my favorite things of playing with Anthony here mm-hmm. is like we're starting to vibe really well. Yeah. When I'm playing the, the low end, the left half of the keyboard, I'm definitely cueing into what Anthony's yeah. doing yeah. largely. 
and being supported by that and hopefully supporting that as well. And I think mm-hmm. recently we've been developing not only a chemistry like in our performance, but also chemistry in writing. Right. After our like first few sessions that Anthony mentioned, we we had a really prolific first day. <laughs> it was awesome. We we came out of the gates firing. I think we had five songs, or at least the structures for them on that first day. And I think one of my favorite writing pieces is Yellow. We were wrapping up that session and I don't know, this ditty just kind of popped out and it was just laying there on the floor and we all picked it up yeah. like as we were putting our instruments away. Have to crap, make a bill. If you want to be like him, get your dollar bill, y'all. No matter what you do to say that you're wrong, stack your brain any way you see fit. Kind don't stop, use imagination. Hold it, shoot it in, shoot it in. Turn it like an elephant. Look at Graham like you got extra sending if you need a trip. This is one of my favorite songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Buttery. Um, <laughs> but yeah, long story short, yeah, I mean, we're still in the process of learning how that all, uh, all comes together, and uh, it's been really fun. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of a joy just kind of to go at it loose and, and fresh and just kind of like, I don't know, you play around with stuff till it pops out, until it shows itself. That's pretty sweet. Watching you guys perform, too, you know, it remind me of kind of those larger groups in terms of everything from, you know, Parliament to Flaming Lips to something that's like kind of exciting to see, just like a bunch of people coming together that it, it didn't seem like it was in any particular genre yeah uh, i think everybody has their own little their own little way of writing or playing and it all kind of just comes together really nicely yeah. i think that's like <laughs> one of the purchases i made just before the pandemic was this little 808 machine which i'm yeah, really happy cool. for getting that because <laughs> it definitely prepared me for this uh the situation here a year ago i wouldn't have thought i was going to be making like an alternative oh yeah no thing. way no one's not a chance I, i've been playing bluegrass <laughs> and, and yeah, other absolutely stuff <laughs> <laughs> you said the song yellow do you have any other particular song that really hits home for like all of you together that you just feel like you really kind of got that one locked down more than others? Go Home's a big one, I think, for yeah, us. Like uh, Different's a big one for yeah. us. That's, yeah. that's sort of like our MO of a, of a song almost, you know, it's like, it's just... Which are they're wildly different. Yeah. Right? Right. <laughs> but those, those, those songs, man, they, they hit I differently. Really, I really like Aftermath. Yeah, yeah I really one, like yeah. Aftermath. That's that the first song. Yeah. The first song. That one I really and we're like. also just working on more stuff, so oh, it's yeah. not even just... Yeah, man. We can't get enough. Right. Right. It's kind of like the, the favorite song is almost the next one we do. We're like, oh, we're excited about yeah. this. Yeah. Let's try this one out, you know, so... Do you feel like the the pandemic has helped in some ways creatively with this project in particular? Yeah, for sure. It feels like you you separated from your daily life, which is like going out places, everything. So it's like for an artist, you're just sitting back and actually just like focusing on your music. So either if you're me and Fernando, we just sit down and write to any beat that we hear. It doesn't matter. We can correspond with our writing to any beat that we listen to. So it's like, that's, that's putting in our work for the day. Mm -hmm. And for anybody else, it's like, Oh, I may be writing or learning some new VST or Mm -hmm. doing some, some new flick of the wrist, you know, just anything like that, that is getting you further in the day that you would be doing not necessarily not being productive, but Mm -hmm. not doing as much as you would be originally. That's what I think. Yeah, I was a big fan of going out of the town before the yeah. pandemic started. So yeah. it doesn't really help me hone the craft. So <laughs> Save some money at the bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not a wealthy man, but I'm, I'm a little bit more wealthy. Now. Uh, I don't even know if it's five dollars I can drink anymore. I'm a little older than. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So. I guess we'll find out. When yeah. Plus, well, um, you know, the world being in the crazy chaos that it is, really, I don't know. It gives us a lot of writing material. Like half, yeah. half the songs so far, I kind of like. You know, yeah, aftermath is yeah, totally... aftermath is a big one. You know, yeah, it's, it's sort of like a reflections on on the chaos of the world right now. So yeah, yeah. so it's kind of lots of writing material out yeah. there. But yeah, I do think we're pretty fortunate in, in having this uh, collective. Yeah. yeah, this collective and um... collection. <laughs> it must be infectious. <laughs> We've heard work from you know kind of the separation of the bands coming together, but, you know, we've heard work from each one of your different projects. What's coming up next? I mean, we're doing the garage sessions. People are going to be able to check out music, but what are you excited about that's going to be kind of coming out in 2021 or 2022 with the band? So many things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, countless. Um, I know Nehi July right now is in the process of recording an album. Yep. 
I'm doing and really well. We share a bassist and lead guitarist with and a them. drummer. And a drummer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, oh shoot, I lost my train of thought. Oh, we got <laughs> Fernando's got an album coming yeah, out. I got an soon. album coming out. Trapped forever. Oh yeah, it's we've got some birthday. sneak peeks of that, and that sounds really good so yeah. far. Yeah. Yeah. I got to say, man. Stuff, yeah, I got this. I got this album coming out called Smoke and Mirrors. It should be out by this time. So right. I'm really excited about that. Stuff has been releasing can, all you sorts can find of music yeah. on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, all that stuff. But yeah, for for Lavender as a as a project, we're just nailing down and yeah. writing some more. Yeah. Um, we That's got, what I'm super excited about writing more songs. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I got a lot to show you. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> um, we we got some shows we're kind of working on. Like we, I, I booked some stuff. Yeah. I'm working on some other outdoor yeah. venues. We're trying to trying to do summer right and and you know do concerts responsibly if we can get out and play the outdoor venues and play whatever we can get our hands on as far as that kind of stuff. But, and I think as we're doing that, we're, we're always thinking about the studio. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Like, how is this going to work in the studio? Um, what, we, what can we make it, what can we do to make it better for yeah. the studio? Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. We'll, we'll hopefully have something lined up uh, by the end of next year, I hope. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. We haven't really talked about it, but I know we all have intention mm-hmm. yeah. of mm-hmm. recording a, a studio album. It's been enjoyable to watch and see, and people will be able to check it out on Garage Sessions coming up. But uh, if people want to follow along, where, where's the best avenue for them to go to? Um, right now, we, we have our uh, Instagram. I yeah. think it's probably the best. And then we also have a Facebook page as well, just called The Lavender Project. Yeah. We'll have them as we, as we go, too. I'm sure we'll have a... It's not set up now, but we're trying to get a YouTube, I think, set up to get some of our just other songs and singles and stuff out there that way. Um, until we have things fully recorded, it's not going to be a whole lot. Spotify or things like that. It's yeah. all in the future. We're we're a pretty young band. I would say maybe six months, not even perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever that all, first garage. All I got going yeah. on, man. That's <laughs> close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com and you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.